All right then, so now we have this kind of basic schema set up. We have a book type and a root query, and we're passing this schema now as a property through to this middleware right here. Okay, so we're telling Express GraphQL, look, you can use this schema now to kind of map out the graph, if you like, and so you know what's gonna happen when someone makes a request to this endpoint right here. So before, when we went in a browser to forward slash GraphQL, we got this error message which said, GraphQL middleware options must contain a schema. But now we've passed that schema through, we have it here. So what we could do is restart the server. I've already done that. And if we now refresh over here, we're probably gonna get another message. Yep, and it says, must provide a query string. And basically it's saying here, look, you've gone to this endpoint forward slash GraphQL. I presume you want some kind of data or you want to interact with this data, but you've not provided me any kind of query string. You know those things that look like this with an open and close uh, curly brace, then book, etc. You've not provided that query string. So I don't really know what to do. And that's because basically we're not meant to interact with GraphQL this way. Just go to forward slash GraphQL. It's an endpoint for other applications to use to make HTTP requests uh, and queries to get data back essentially. But what if we just want to test out our GraphQL server and make some of these test queries, if you like. I showed you that graphical tool earlier on, which we can use. So how do we set that up? Because when I went to forward slash GraphQL before, we saw that little tool here that we could make those queries with. Well, the way we do that is pretty simple. Inside our middleware over here, we just add in another property called graphical, and it's graph equal with an I between H and QL. And we're gonna set this equal to true. So we're saying here, we want to use the graphical tool when we go to this address in a browser. So now let's save that. Node1 is automatically gonna restart my server over here, so I don't need to do anything. And then in the browser, if I refresh now, we should see this graphical tool. Awesome. This is just welcome text, I'm gonna get rid of it. And we had a look at this before, where we made a query on the left, and we got the data back on the right. What we didn't look at is this documenta uh, documentation explorer over here. So this thing, this panel, is gonna tell you about the GraphQL server that you're making queries to, and it's gonna be different for every GraphQL server. So if we have a look here, it says that the query is a, uh, a root query type, and we can query for a book, and that book must have an ID. And we can take a look at the book object to see which properties we can access off it, an ID, name, or genre. So this is pretty cool. Imagine if a friend or colleague made a GraphQL server and he wanted me to flesh out the front end, so I needed to test out the uh, the queries for this GraphQL server, I could take a look at this documentation over here to see the different types of queries I could make, uh, the different types of data I could retrieve, and which properties I could retrieve. This is a really, really cool tool for developers that want to use a GraphQL server that's been made. Anyway, this is how we make the request for a book. We say book, then the ID. So let's try that out. Let's say we wanna make a request for a book with an ID of one. So let's open up our curly braces first for this query. Then the query is gonna be for a book. And inside the ID is gonna be of one. And we need to take, turn that into ID. Okay, and this by the way here needs to be double quotes. It cannot be single quotes, okay? That won't work. It needs to be double quotes for this to work. Then we'll open up our curly braces again to say inside which fields we want to retrieve back from that book. We'll say we want the name of the book. We also want the genre of the book. And finally, the ID of the book. So now if I press play, then we're gonna send this query to our GraphQL server. It's gonna look at this query, remember, inside this schema file over here. It's gonna look at it and it's gonna fire this thing down here. And this resolve function is gonna take that ID that we've passed along and it's gonna find that book from up here and it's gonna return it to us. So let's press play and see what happens. Voila! We get this data object back with a book on it. The name is the name of the wind, fantasy genre, and an ID of one. So this has worked. And the cool thing is, remember, about GraphQL is that we don't have to retrieve all 
of the different properties. If I take off ID and press play, it's not going to return the ID to me. We just get the name and genre. And we've not had to kind of program that behavior. That's GraphQL doing all of that heavy lifting behind the scenes. You know, inside our schema over here, we've not said, okay, if the user just requests a name and the genre, don't send them the, uh, the ID. We've not done that. We've just said, okay, find the book and return it. GraphQL, you take care of the rest. And that's exactly what it's doing. All right. So this is really cool. Okay, let's try it with a different one. ID of two. We get the final empire. So that's working. ID of three. Play. We get the long earth. Sci-fi. Cool. If we put in an ID which doesn't exist, then we get a book with a property value of null. So this is basically saying, look, this book doesn't exist. Likewise, if we try to pass something in here, I don't know, like another property like pages to say how many pages long it is, then we're going to get a little red underlined squiggly thing here, which says this is basically not a property of this object type. But either way, if we try to request it, then we're going to get an error message back here, which says cannot query field pages on type book. So it's basically saying, look, this thing doesn't exist. So don't request it. All right. So my friends, this is how we can use graphical to test out our GraphQL server and all these different types of requests. And we're going to be using it extensively as we go through the rest of this series.